Good morning! Hi everyone, it's Braylon and welcome back to the channel. Um, today is going to be a nice good old fashioned uh, get work done organizational type vlog. I have a lot of things that I want to show you all and um, some systems and materials that I'm going to prep, um, but actually I'm going to prep it at the school building. So I'm a little worried about that because it's Sunday and I hate going into the building with the code. Like I'm terrified I'm going to set off the alarm or something, but I need to get a lot of stuff done. I have a lot of materials that I need to set up and I did a big haul at the dollar store. So um, I want to show you all of those things. Um, there's some things I need to laminate, some things I need to print. So I just ordered my Starbucks, so I'm going to go pick it up. I actually need to stop at Home Depot, which is on the way, and see if they have a couple more of these Sterilite drawers that I'm looking for. Um, I have labels for them, but I ran out of the drawers and then um, yeah then we'll head to the building sorry you're slanted but we're working with what we've got so I'm at Starbucks I got an iced latte um, they were out of the brown sugar shaken espresso so upset because that is so good but in Somerville they only give you paper straws there's no plastic bags there's no plastic straws I thought I had an extra I think I do have an extra reusable straw, the one that we had last time. I'm struggling because that's what I want. Okay, I also, oh, there it is. This is why I always keep this because I freaking hate these paper straws. Um, the other thing I want to say is that I checked all of the Home Depots and they don't have those Sterilite pins, but they have them closer to my parents' house. So I might call my mom and see if she can go pick them up and then I'll just like stop by and get them um, like next week or something. That might be easier. Everyone needs one of these, the copper travel straw kit or whatever kind, but it's small like this and then you open it up and it's a straw. And so I don't have to use that darn paper straw. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm at the school building. I'm going to attempt to get in. I'm a little terrified um, because I don't want to set off the alarm. And it looks like maybe someone else is here, which would be the the blessing of a lifetime because then I won't even have to put my code in. Terrified? Okay, I will fill you in in a second. Oh my gosh, everyone. I made it. So, let me paint the scene. I park my car right in front of the building. I have so much stuff to bring into the building, so I just like put it up outside the door. And I'm like praying like, okay, I'm going to walk in, put the code in, push the button and it'll say it's all right. And I could hear this like weird beep buzzing in the building and I was like, "Oh, maybe that's the code or maybe that's the sound of like the extra security, I don't know." So I walk in, put the code, it says invalid. I try it one more time, invalid. Now I'm freaking out. So then I walk back outside cuz I have the key to get in, you just have to like disarm the code. I walk out outside and I'm about to call my boss because I'm like, oh my gosh, the police are gonna arrive at the scene and think I'm trying to sneak into this building, which is not true. Oh, starting to panic. And then all of a sudden I see the painters. The painters are in the building painting because we're trying to get every, uh, they're painting all the doors and all the different things. And so there's a couple people that come and paint. And this is why you are nice to the people who work in the building. Because my classroom is one of the only ones in the building, every time we go for walks in the school or something, we always say hi to the painters. We always say hi to the construction people because they're redoing the gym. Long story long, she recognized me, so she knew I wasn't like an intruder or something, and was like, hey, I've been in the building. Um, she also speaks Spanish, so she said this to me in Spanish. I've been in the building, tried to set the code. The code isn't working. None of the codes are working, so um, I already called the management company. I'm just gonna be here painting. They said it's all right. And and then she was like, yeah, I'll be here till like four o'clock. So um, let me know if you need anything, um, but I'll, I'll come find you if I leave early. Are you kidding? Thank God, because if she wasn't here, I would have set the alarm off and the police would have been called. <laughs> so all of this for some freaking standardized testing portfolios. Are you kidding me? <sighs> I'm angry, but anyway, I'm here, I'm gonna sit right here at this table with um, my additional monitor and my mouse. I'm just gonna sit here at this table and get a bunch of stuff done. I'm gonna set up all of my portfolios on these different tables, kind of lay it out, see what I need, and then just start going to town, printing, 
putting everything in sheet protectors, making sure it looks really good. Hello everyone, it's editing Braylon on the ratchet camera on my Mac desktop, but I wanted to really quickly explain something. So I'm about to start talking about the standardized assessment that we use in Massachusetts, which is called MCAS. And um, for students with disabilities that are more severe and profound, they do an alternative uh, assessment, which is a portfolio. So I have some students that are of age to take that test and they're doing the alt. And so I now have three students where I'm laying out the information. I have to prove that they've done their math, reading, and writing work by giving work samples and graphing it on like big data charts and annotating everything for the state. It's a big mess, which is why I'm here on a Sunday. But I wanted to make that clear and explain it a little more because I don't feel like I explained it enough in the video. So you're welcome. So for each graph, you need to have eight to 10 data points. Sorry, I'm shaking. I'm just trying to cut off the names. But basically, you have to prove that they've been able to do it accurately and independently. For math, there's two strands. For um, reading or like ELA, there's two strands and then there's a writing strand. And so that's just for third grade. And so then you have to prove through work samples and the data you've collected and like a lot of documentation that they can do it independently. So for like a third grade standard, it's multiplication. But for a lot of my students, their entry point is like, basic addition with manipulatives or something like that and so I have to show progression with that goal essentially it's kind of like an IEP goal weirdly enough um, and so that's kind of been my main focus with all of these and so I've been gathering all of the evidence putting it in order now I'm gonna go back through make sure my graphs look really good and annotate their work to show what was correct and then what was independent um, and then that hopefully will be the last of it hopefully that's it and I don't have to do this I don't have to keep doing this <laughs> again and again I just worked for a solid two and a half hours um I got one student almost completely finished I just have to wait for two more data points for each subject because we still have a little bit of time before the portfolios are due. So I'm going to wait for one more, one or two more uh, things. But I'm going to take a break right now and do some other like housekeeping things. I want to move one of these big... Um, what are they called shelves down to my actual classroom and kind of put it in the right spot um, and then I want to be down there in my classroom and kind of uh, reorganize and kind of show you all my plans for what I have in store um, and might even add some of the stuff to my wall of manipulatives that's kind of my big plan I just want my room downstairs to be ready even if I don't end up going down there sometime this year because it's really, really small and I've been up in this larger room for like social distancing purposes. But even if I can't do that, I still want it to be ready for uh, the summer and for the fall. Here is this shelf that I've been using for everything, but I don't need it here anymore. So I'm going to empty everything out of it and then bring the shelf downstairs to my classroom. Um, and then I'll be able to show you some of the things that we have going on downstairs in my actual room. So there's a lot of the room I can't show you because it has a bunch of Chromebooks and stuff from the school. They're kind of using this room as storage. But this is my regular classroom, which I'll leave a link down below for my actual classroom tour. I love this room. I think it's so fun and cozy and I like the color scheme a lot better. Oh, see, there's just like stuff everywhere. So um, most of it is not mine. Hopefully it will be gone soon. But this is my wall of stuff. There's no storage in this room, so I had to make the storage up. And I want to show you some of the plan. So I have this here for math. This is going to house all of my math stuff, whether it's file folders, uh, simple activities. Um, then up here we'll have sensory things and social skills and life skills units. My manipulatives, I'm having three more of those coming um, for more manipulatives with the labels and then adapted stuff, comprehension, comprehension, parts of speech, a bunch of things. And I can't show you up top because it has the stuff. And then I'm going to house a bunch of things up top. So, and then even more down there. It's so hot in here. <laughs> The heat is on and I can't open the windows because I 
I can't reach the windows without Austin. So it's just gonna be really hot. <laughs> but um, I also brought these. I've been making leveled readers. Well, Austin has been making leveled readers. So I'm gonna have these. I don't know where, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them yet, but I'm gonna put them somewhere. So I think I'm gonna take a second, just kind of reevaluate all of this and see. Maybe I should move this all the way down and then move these three over here so that all the shelves are together and then all the manipulatives no but there's going to be a table right here and we're going to need easy access to the manipulatives maybe i move the manipulatives over here there'll be two two sections of these and then i can move down the shelves that's what i'm going to do okay hold on So I moved everything down. It looks so much better. So let's see if I can show you without getting anything else in the way. So that way it kind of looks like this and then I have tons of space here where I can put another one of these and then something else. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do or I'll leave that blank for a catch-all. But there will be bins up above here as well that all kind of look like this black one. I have a bunch more of black and then uh, gray so that I can just store my necessary stuff. Um, I'm a little nervous because I just got word that, sorry there's people walking through the hallway, I just got word that there's a possibility that they're going to paint my walls this summer. <laughs> Maybe I can put in a request for them to not paint my walls, only because I th I think if they paint them the green and the whatever, it might be too stimulating. But also I don't want to have to move everything and move it back. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. We'll see maybe if, if I can keep my walls the same. But I hope, I just like hope I can. Time for a quick dollar store mini haul. I spent about $50, but I actually am so excited for all the things that I bought. They were very necessary. And um, I want to show you kind of like my plan. So I bought seven of these and my plan is these might either be for this year or next year, depending on like shifting from hybrid to in-person, like all of that junk. I want these to house like their dry erase board or like a book that they're working on um, a sensory toy, whatever, and so that they can be behind the teacher desks um, or within easy access for them to reach when they're in their small groups. And so these are really simple. I am not like a color coder by nature. I don't really like it. I actually prefer everyone to have the same color with just their names on it. I think aesthetically, for me at least, it looks better. I know that some people like color coding because it keeps them in line, but I'm just not organized enough for that. And aesthetically, it fits with me, <laughs> with what I like to look at. So that's kind of the plan for these. These are a dollar each. These are these book bins. I love them so much. And I really liked this color. <sighs> Again, don't mind all these carts in here. I bought uh, 14, so seven sets of these. And I think I talked about this in a vlog earlier or on Instagram. But essentially, I want one that says to do and one that says done because every day we already do like work systems and work tasks and they're getting really great at following those and doing independent work that way. So I want to keep these bins. I'm going to keep them nice in here. I'm probably going to use them next year, but I'm going to label, put the label up for to do and then done so that they understand the whole system. And um, I have other videos about work tasks and let me know if you want a more in-depth video on work tasks because I can do that. But that this accommodates for seven students, which is probably what I'm going to have, if that, maybe even less. Then I'm going to take some of these home um, and do some projects, but I bought a bunch of these um, like alphabet books and like little books from the dollar store. And then I bought 17, <laughs> um, what are these called? Oh my gosh, what are they called? Photo frames. Wow, oh my gosh. The word came in a different language and I couldn't think of what it was in English. But so photo frames, um, 
for some of the posters that I have and I wanted some poster frames. This will be taken down. I want some poster frames to go here, up there. So that's kind of the plan. So I think I might go upstairs and just eat my lunch and cut some of my poster pieces. Um, and I won't put them up yet because again, who knows, I might actually have to take all this down, but um, this is better than nothing. Sorry, one of my coworkers uh, stopped by, so I'm not the only one here on a Sunday. Um, right now I'm actually gonna take some time go through the materials that I prepped and put everything in the folders. I kind of forgot to do this on Friday. I would always do this on Friday, but it was a crazy day and I was kind of ready to leave. Um, so I'm gonna prep that really quick and put all of my papers in. So I'm not gonna talk about this for the 800th, 1000th time, but this is how we keep all of our materials ready. And I have um, file folder, hanging folders for each day and then file folders for each kid. Per day so that we know what they're doing per subject. One thing that I did find at the dollar store, like I was saying, was all these little, I don't know, like readers, little activity books that were a dollar each. And um, I thought they were so cute. So I'm actually going to add those to the folders as another activity for them to do. And there were even some sticker books, like sticker for alphabet and sticker for all the different things. So I'm excited about that. And then I found this which I think I'm gonna hang up today and we'll be using for the rest of the year because like I was saying I'm getting more students and um, I know that they will just be more like transitions like people leaving for OT and all these other things and so this is my favorite thing that I made I literally took a poster board from the dollar store printed off pictures from a visual schedule that I already had and added velcro <laughs> uh, I laminated it a big laminator at my old school but um, if possible, you could find another option or you could just leave it without laminating. It's perfectly fine. And yeah, so then we mark down where everybody is and I have not been using it this year and I probably should. I also had individual schedules for each kid on the wall and I took those down because we kept transitioning from in person to home to back in person and every time their schedules would change and I was realizing that my students were trying to follow it, but it was just like, changing so often I just scrapped it so now we use the whole class schedule and the people will come and pick them up the different providers and specialists and I just trust the specialist judgment they come take the kid good enough for me as long as nothing overlaps I'm fine with it um so I'm trying to think I'm, I'm gonna be preparing a few more binders like work binders I think and for curriculum, we've been thinking a lot about curriculum, and we kind of realized that my school already had a lot of foundations, and so I think we might go with that. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure curriculum out, but I have a big bucket of foundation stuff, so I think I'm going to go through that and just see um, if I can utilize anything um, in the next couple days and kind of test it out to see if I like it. And if I do, then maybe I'll ask to order... Oops, sorry, I'm setting you up. Maybe I'll ask to order more um, for next year. But it's hard because it's like so grade specific and I feel like I need like four grades worth of stuff. Um, so let me, there's like sound cards and these magnet letter uh, phonics sounds and stuff. I, I kind of want to get the Wilson training. Yeah, I kind of want to get the Wilson training. If I get the Wilson training, then maybe this will make more sense. If you're don't, not familiar with foundations, it's run by Wilson. There's a few, you know, are reading science options. There's Wilson, there's Orton Gillingham, there's um, a few smaller other ones. So this one is definitely Wilson based. I kind of like it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go through it. And then I have this whole pile of things that I'm just not using on the floor. <laughs> Uh, like old extra binders and I don't know I don't know what this is oh it's just like oh this is just so much let's see so I'm gonna keep me talking to myself not even talking to you talking to myself literally okay so I have these extra I don't know what the heck all right, I can bring these three th these three things back down to my classroom, and then um, these extra pieces, which I don't use small pieces like this anymore, but I'm gonna keep them for a visual schedule in case I ever use them. 
All right, I'm gonna leave in a couple minutes, but I wanna show you a few more things and systems that I was just fiddling with. So um, we have been doing this for a couple days, but I need to tweak it. So kind of similar to what I talked about downstairs, there's a box of to-do, oops, and a box of done. Um, some students are working on just first then, and then some have three, and then I think some can do four. So we've been working on that, and we're dedicating a solid 15 minutes each day to this, and they're simple tasks because we're just trying to get into the routine. Finally took all the iPads since we're not all home anymore. These are the, um, what they were using to learn from at home, so they would log on to Zoom here, do all of their activities. So now they're here, and I have this little plug from um, Ikea. Oops, it's not, sorry, it's not... um clearing up but here anyway the thing from Ikea so I can plug three in so those are ready these are just the two extra ones in the classroom they don't have all the apps that we need but I like them anyway and they have YouTube kids um I kind of picked up some of Austin's stuff and um looked through some of his manipulatives that he uses um but for the most part it's good this is like the things he uses, I just left them there. And I, after getting that, uh, dr that shelf out, I feel a lot better. There's the foundation stuff. I cut a time of the day. So we were doing math for a really long block. <laughs> and then we were doing reading and it was shorter. So I actually cut 15 minutes off of math and added that to my read aloud time. Um, so that I could have a designated time for read aloud. And that helped a lot. And so, um, overall I feel like... We're making a lot of progress and the schedule is starting to click with them because we've only been back for a couple weeks um, after vacation. And yeah, it's just looking like everything is all set. Let me show you. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show, we I couldn't find this, but I just remade one. So this is the calendar for our morning meetings. I was using it when we were virtual. Um, a digital version of it, but then I would come in person and I wasn't using the calendar and then morning meeting was just not going as smoothly as I wanted and I was like, oh my gosh, duh, Braylon, get your calendar out. And I spent most of my time doing the assessment, which I know is probably no fun to watch, but maybe it's, you know, you feel a sense of camaraderie or something knowing that there are other people just working on standardized testing and I don't want my channel to always look like I'm just doing like the fun things or I don't have to do extra work like sometimes you do and if once or twice a year I have to come on a Sunday and do a bunch of assessment stuff then fine by me you know I can do that I'm not going to do that every weekend I'm not going to spend every weekend working but if it happens occasionally then it does and I'm totally fine with that um, I'm going to leave the room kind of in shambles I'll be back tomorrow morning Monday morning to kind of pick everything up quickly before school starts, but at least I know everything's planned and prepped, and at least I know that my assessments are almost done, and that is like a really good feeling. So when they're done, I will let you all know, but I'm gonna end the vlog there. I'm gonna get in my car, I'm gonna go home and enjoy the rest of my Sunday afternoon. It's like almost two o'clock, so that's pretty good. I did a lot in um like four or five hours, and then I'm gonna you know go grocery shopping and get everything set up for the week. Maybe do my laundry. Oh my gosh, who am I, an adult? I don't know, <laughs> but um, you guys are the best and I hope that there was something helpful in this video. If not, then I hope it was just a random time passing experience. Um, but I will see you in the next video. Bye.